and you are here on SCW, the wrestling channel here on youtube.com. Thank you for choosing the channel and choosing the video. Please subscribe right now. Leave any comments in the comment section. Please like and share the video as well. It's SCW interviews today, and I've got a very special guest with me. I've got Ovi Manis here from the Heart Hitting Wrestling Show. Uh, Join us here on SCW. Ovi, how are you doing, my good friend? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to have you here, honestly. Um, it's something I want to do for quite a while. I had the privilege to be on your show um, the last time that there was a, an In Your House uh, takeover for NXT. And, uh, well, we're not far from a takeover now from next In Your House. So uh, it feels like it's a nice time to have you back on the show. But we're going to be talking about some current affairs with WWE. Uh, we're also going to touch a little bit with Ovi about his personal wrestling experiences, what made him a fan. Uh, but first off, I think we need to talk about your show to begin with, um, the hard-hitting wrestling show which is, a, uh, is on multiple different platforms. So I'm going to let you take the floor uh, and give your channel a plug for the viewers here today. I appreciate it. So the HSW show stands for the Hard Hitting Wrestling Show. The Hard Hitting is about speaking the truth, uh, especially the era where I grew up at. We always called ourselves the Hard Hitting because it was New Britain, Connecticut. Uh, but, um, but the purpose of this is to try to get all the superstars their their gimmicks and trying to relate to what's going on in the real world uh, so for example we have the messiah seth rollins and what he what he's claimed to be whatever his storyline is we'll try to grab it and see what's relating around the world uh, the freshest one that we, we haven't discussed in our show yet is the retribution which we're trying to wait and see how far they will go and there's a lot of protests going on in the united states uh, whether it's Black Lives Matter, whether it's just any other uh, any other situations there, a lot of uh, looting. So, you know, with that, let's see how far we go with retribution, and then we could create that storyline and say, hey, what's going on in our world today? And it's not only just that; it's uh, also relationships. As you can see, Lana and uh, Bobby Lashley they didn't get along, so we, we discuss about that. And there's just many more other things uh, out there. Uh, I had a, a privilege to interview a former NXT star, uh, Zia Zhang. Uh, and she was wonderful on the show. And, and a lot of the purpose of that was because there's a lot of girls that in high school that are wanting to wrestle. But in my local area, there is not a girls wrestling team. So they jump on to the boys wrestling team. So just things like that, that really grabbed not only myself, but my peers to do the HSW show podcast. I love the inspiration. I love the, the way that it makes you inspired to make that show. Like you say, taking the things that we see on our screens and what's going actually on behind the scenes as well and, and bringing it to life and, and, sh and seeing the real and the meaningness within it all. I, I really like that concept. It's been something that's really uh, made me a big fan of your show. Um, I mean, you've been involved with uh, your shows on YouTube as well, uh, Spotify. I've seen you've got lives on Facebook and Twitter as well recently. So uh, you're on multiple platforms as well for people to check you out. Yes, uh, we're in multiple platforms and audio, not only just Spotify, but Google, Apple, and, and a lot more. Uh, but we're trying to gear more to Facebook and Twitter, and then uh, we'll take the, the video images and edit it to YouTube. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it's, uh, people want to see, they want that vision and stuff. And now to incorporate all the headlines that's happened within the past week of WWE, uh, but it's, what we had discussed earlier, visual is always preferred to see one-on-one -on how people relate to one another. And of course, the backup is the audio. So, but hey, we're having a tremendous success. Uh, it's been a one full year that we've, we've been doing the podcast and we hopefully we could grow our audience and grow our show to a bigger platform. I hope so as well, because, I mean, you guys, you do such tremendous work. I mean, it's not just you yourself. You have uh, multiple different guests that come on the show as well. Yes, and a lot has to do with Clovercrest Media. Uh, they're the ones that are sponsoring the show, HSW Show. Uh, and it all originated to the school that I went to was called the Connecticut School of Broadcasting, where we learned uh, to be on-air talents as well as doing the, the backup stuff to present the show. Oh, fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. Um, do you mind if we take a trip down memory lane for you over then, if we could uh, <laughs> perhaps get some uh, insight into what brought you into the world of professional wrestling to begin with? Of course. Let's do this. Yeah, definitely. So uh, what was, do you remember the first show you watched roughly the year? Uh, I'm going to say they're probably 1984, 85, 
Wow. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm that old. <laughs> but uh, I, the, the the most notable match that I that I remember was Hulk Hogan winning the WWE Championship, or back then was called the Heavyweight Title uh, against the Iron Sheik. Uh, and so that's what started. My my brother is a big wrestling fan, and my father as well. And even without watching uh, wrestling, we do our own wrestling stunts. And there's always those cuts and bruises that go along with it uh, until mom finds out. And then we get our butt whipping for getting hurt. So, <laughs> of course, <laughs> but yeah, yeah um, ever since then, every weekend watching wrestling, I, I just became a fan and, and nonstop even to this day. Absolutely fantastic. And so was, was uh, Hulk Hogan your initial favorite? Of course, uh, Hulkamania was running wild, wasn't he, around, among that time as uh, wrestling itself was growing? Or did you have perhaps someone else that was a favorite when you first started? Uh, besides Hulk Hogan, I was into uh, Ricky Steamboat. Uh, I seen him in NWA and WCW before he popped into WWF. Uh, Sting and versus Ric Flair, it was my favorite rivalry, and it's probably the top rivalry of all time. Uh, we probably could argue about that, uh, <laughs> but uh, there are many ones. I'm more I'm more into tag team divisions. Uh, I was a big fan of the Demolition. Of uh, the Legion of Doom, even before Legion of Doom was the Road Warriors, uh, when they were the NWA and WCW. So uh, th th those were the most intriguing uh, superstars that drove me to always continue watching wrestling. Absolutely, and some great choices as well. There's some true legends of the of the grappling game, if you will, because uh, I must admit I, I had the the luxury recently, obviously during the lockdown, to perhaps have a bit of a rewind when it comes to watching some classic NWA and WCW. And I must say that uh, the Sting and Flair rivalry, um, particularly going from those late 80s all the way through to the early 90s, some fantastic matches. Like you say, a true, uh, you know, rivalry that can live through the ages and uh, definitely put those two on the map. Certainly put Sting on the map at the time. Yes, and we're, something that's coming up after SummerSlam in our show is we're going to start doing the Tag Team Turmoil uh, tournament, which is 64 tag teams, and we're going to narrow it down into who is the greatest of all time tag teams. Uh, but we broke it down into phases where we have the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, and today. And some of it is going to be bumps in the road because some of these superstars were in multiple tag teams. So it's going to be fascinating to see who advances to each round. Fantastic. So is, is this ultimately to determine for, for you guys who is the best tag team of all time? That's correct. Fantastic. And is there a way that uh, fans can, can vote into this or is this, uh, you know, amongst the team? What, how, how will this uh, work in, a, in, a, well, in the different brackets? We're going to debate on the show. Uh, each episode we'll debate to see who wins. And then we're going to calculate not only what we have voted, but also the fans who, or who they vote. So you could tune into hhwshow.com every week. Uh, there'll be a, a voting and people could just vote. It could be there and it also will be on Twitter. Fantastic. Uh, so yeah, as I mentioned as well, not only the shows going on those platforms, you also have your website as well, where you have uh, a lot of the, the multiple news reports as well that come out, um, particularly with pay-per-views and, and latest breaking news in general, really, don't you? Yes, uh, I research through multiple sources. Uh, I'm very picky on the ones that I do choose because there are rumors that there's yes. some rumors are not meant to spread. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't tend to focus on the negative. It's more to the positive. Uh, the negative, it's just, it's, it's just a bad, bad rap. And, uh, and if I don't know what's really going on, I'm not there to see it. So, uh, but if multiple sources confirm that this is a story, so I like to put a little bit of twist in it to where how I could see what fits or what other people, there a lot of similarities to what could possibly happen. So, and, and also that's perfect for your channel as well. It has your own personal touch, but also it's what's real and what brings out, you know, the realness of the situations as well, which I think is good because uh, like you say, a lot of rumors that come out tend to be false. And uh, sometimes we expect things to happen and then usually, you know, creative changes their mind or something like this. And then all of a sudden, you know, we, we sit and go, oh, hang on, that wasn't the plan at all. So I uh, completely know where you're coming from with that. But um, going through, as just to say, through your experiences, um, through those times growing up as, as a wrestling fan, uh, you mentioned there that you were there for WCW and WWE or WWF at the time. Um, I have to ask the question, the Monday Night Wars, um, what side of the fence was you on? Was she channel hopping or was there one side you were devoted to? 
I'm devoted to WWF slash WWE, man. Um, I mean, I, I, I've, seen, I've seen it both. I mean, my brother was a big WCW fan. So they had the channels had to flip back and forth. Uh, those of you that know, back then we had the cable box, so each button. So it was easier than what we have when you go streaming because yep. you, you flip the channel, then you have to wait until it actually circulates and then you get to watch the show. Uh, but the good thing is, is that even today, I, I think there's some similarities to NXT and uh, AEW where you could record a show, watch one, and then when you finish watching the show, you could jump on the other one just to catch up, which is a, a lot easier than back in the days. Absolutely, indeed, yeah. Um, I mean, you mentioned there with the, with the Wednesday Night Wars and stuff, but are you a fan of AEW, of the current product they put on, or do you more stick to WWE and NXT? Uh, my primary is NXT. Uh, I do at times see AEW, uh, but I have my, my peer, uh, Frank, who is a big AEW fan. So with him and Tyler Bard, who also has his own show about AEW, uh, they get to fill me in of everything that's going on. So we're trying to spread, spread, our, spread our wealth when it comes to trying to cover all the wrestling platforms. But to watch Raw, NXT, and SmackDown, you know, that's a lot of wrestling in the week. And then trying to add more to my plate, I just pass it on to them. So, you know, they, they just keep me informed. I agree with you. I mean, it's like a full-time job just trying to keep up with each show every week. It's, uh, it can be definitely hard to keep up with everything going on. So uh, I sympathize with you there. And to carry it out more, I just tune into your channel to see because you have an awesome information. I'm almost, usually I'm mostly up to date on your show. I appreciate that <laughs> very much. I really do. Lock, lockdown's been helpful, I must say. Um, it's been very good this year because, uh, I mean, particularly with certain companies, I mean, I perhaps would have to dismiss them in, in a normal regular scale, but um, it's given me the opportunity to catch up on, on certain things that uh, may have taken years to have come back to. So, um, yeah, it, it, every every silver cloud, I guess, um, you know, has you know every cloud has a silver lining, as they say. But, um, I mean, looking through then some of your, your favorites then in history, how about we go a bit more up to date then? I mean, who are the superstars uh, of the current, you know, rosters that stand out for you and that you are excited to view each and every week? I'm very excited with Aleister Black, uh, especially with him coming up from NXT, him and Ricochet. Uh, I, I'm a little bit disappointed in how what they did with Ricochet on, the, on his call-up. Uh, but Aleister Black is more consistent. I like to see him do more bigger and better things, and I think it will happen once mm. he's come back from injury. And, and I would love to see him feud again with Seth Rollins. Uh, but uh, Samoa Joe is climbing up there. Oh, yeah. uh, he, uh, and I, I got a gut feeling that he's going to come out of that commentator booth and actually challenge Seth Rollins. I, I just have that gut feeling. Uh, but that's something more we'll, we'll talk about later on. Uh, but um, I'm, I'm always a favorite with John Cena and Randy Orton. Their rivalry, it's awesome, and I follow them too, even when they go in different paths and stuff, especially right now. I think the, the face of WWE Raw right now is Randy Orton. He's having an unbelievable year right now. I mean, just when you thought that uh, perhaps the gimmick was getting a bit tired, a bit stale, Randy Orton's just fresh and everything right back up, reminded us how great he is as the legend killer. Um, I mean, obviously, I mean, we can touch perhaps a bit more current affairs, as mentioned with Randy Orton. Last night on Raw, um, he's uh, finished with Ric Flair as a partnership, it feels, for the time being. Um, the, the punt to the head, which was blacked out, but probably cleverly as Ric Flair's in his 70s, bless him. Probably shouldn't take yeah. that shouldn't take that this uh, stage of his career. But the promo work between both of them uh, was very, very strong. And it just goes to show... Uh, Raw had everything that was good about Randy Orton this year, last night. I felt we had a, you know, a decent match with Kevin Owens, even though perhaps it was a shorter match than perhaps what you would expect on a pay-per-view between the two. Uh, but then you had that promo work with, with him and Flair. And Ric Flair as well, absolutely golden. I mean, he's, you know, he's a legend for a reason, the 16-time world champion for a reason. This guy literally just poured his heart out and expressed how, you know, he loves Randy Orton and, and the experiences he's had to go through uh, and have just, just to be on Raw for him was just such a privilege in 2020 uh, to have him have that taken away. Uh, it was such, um, I think when we look back in six months towards like maybe towards the end of the year, I think this is a, 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 an ending segment of Raw that we're going to remember. Absolutely. Uh I think this is, I, I, in my opinion, I think this is a farewell for Ric Flair right now mm. uh, due to the circumstances, his health and everything else and what's going on in our 
you know, around the world with this COVID-19. Uh, but Randy Orton, it's, he's just following that music. If, if you if stay tuned to his, his uh, musical theme, uh, it, it just, it's everything about Randy Orton. And he is crazy, to be honest with you, <laughs> you know, that crazy minor of his. And, uh, and I think that that might carry him over against Drew McIntyre. Yeah, I mean, the, the big match at SummerSlam. And the thing is, these two have been built up so well throughout this mm-hmm. calendar year. It feels that uh, Drew's had a fantastic 2020, almost like the brand new star of WWE. Um, it's just a shame he's perhaps not had the fans yet to determine how big of a scale he's got over at this point. But um, with Randy Orton, he's obviously collectively on the other side gone back up it feels like the biggest two names in the company will be going up against each other and, and like you say you are you favoring randy orton potentially to walk away with the w and the championship at SummerSlam at this point as of right now yes we still got one more episode on monday night raw to determine what's going to happen uh many will think that in the storyline the good guy is going to actually win and that will be drew mcintyre because of what orton has done but when you reestablish being that legend killer, when you reestablish everything that's happened good for Orton's character, you know, you can't, you can't dismiss that. And what he has done so far, why not give him that title, make him that 14 time champion, make him tie with Triple H. I agree with you. I think that uh, mm-hmm. this year would, it would be capping off a beautiful eight months of booking of Randy Orton if he was to walk away with the gold. I'd feel sorry for Drew McIntyre because obviously his experience as champion has been in front of nobody, but I think he can have that opportunity where he can slightly just, you know, recoup, recover and come back stronger and have that moment winning the championship in front of fans second time round. Yeah, he could be a eight, nine time champion. I mean, whatever number he can be. I mean, look at John Cena. Uh, how many times that he fought and then got back on his feet and won it again. So, I mean, he, he could do that. I think so. I think so as well. I have to touch then. Uh, we mentioned the word retribution earlier. I know you said that you kind of want to take a bit of time just to, to digest. But, um, I mean, it's still very early stages. Technically, you could say baby steps into what they're doing with this so far. But um, what are your just initial thoughts, if I may just ask uh, what you're feeling with this so far? I am... Well, one, I'm trying to investigate. I'm yeah. trying to narrow down who are these people. Now, I got two, um, and that's Chelsea Green. Nice. I'm hoping that's her. Yeah. And what's obvious is uh, Vanessa Bourne. Yeah. I mean, her, there's no other female superstar. If you can look on the WWE website on the main roster, there's there's only one type of hair, and that's her. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. Uh, but the other three – now, a lot of sources are saying – that that might be just a front when it comes to the three males that are hidden behind us. Uh, but could it be a possible ringleader? That's what we need to find out. Who is the ringleader? Could it be Tommaso Ciampa? Since we haven't seen him in a very, very long time, can he make that appearance and lead that mission? We'll have to wait and see. I mean, uh, for me, I really hope Tommaso Ciampa, like you say, the last time we see him was uh, the takeover in your house. Uh, so that's uh, you know been quite a while, and he was destroyed in that match as well with uh, Karrion yeah. Cross. And uh, he also had that that uh, interesting interview when he left the arena. Uh, he didn't want to say a lot. He was kind of distant. So it kind of felt a bit like that maybe just maybe there could be something of a new direction for him. So I, I'm kind of with you on that. I'd like to see him in that position. Um, but I just wonder what retribution actually stands for. What what is the purpose? What is the meaning? Uh, and what is it going to lead to? And like you say, it's it's all investigation at this point. It's all suspect. It's all rumor mill. But uh, <laughs> hopefully, uh, we have uh, a pay-per-view coming up called Payback. And I do believe that the word payback was mentioned in their first, uh, you know, skit where they threw the, uh, what was the cocktails, was it, at the generator to blow that up? So I wonder if maybe we could get maybe some answers in three weeks' time. Yes, and supposedly payback's supposed to happen one week after SummerSlam. So that's really cutting it close to see what it is that's going to be paid back. Uh, but to, to back up on the retribution, that definition of retribution is punishment inflicted on someone as vengeance for a wrong or criminal act. Now, we see it in a lot. Let's, let's take it back in reality. We've seen a lot of how W superstars that get released from WWE and end up going to either Impact Wrestling or AEW. People are jumping ship. And, and it's quite understanding that they're frustrated because they they could have done more in WWE, but not given that opportunity. And if when they did give the opportunity, 
you know, we don't know if they were giving their 100 percent or what what the real story is backstage. But if you take that, you know, maybe WWE has something where, OK, we're not using these superstars. Let's do a retribution and let's see what they can do on their own against those that are already on the platform. I mean, I think it makes a lot of sense. I think it's certainly a, a great idea of what they could use, give purpose for the people that they had nothing to do at that particular time. And like you say, I mean, if it's people that were released that maybe could come back, maybe it's people that are stuck in catering, maybe it's people that have been on the shelf for a long time, maybe someone like an Ali who's just come back. I mean, Xavier Woods feels like a forgotten man from the New Day. I mean, when is his <laughs> return due? No one actually knows when he's due to come back. So it would be interesting. But um, I mean, Evolve was recently purchased as well by WWE. Are some of those guys, we're starting to see one or two creep on TV. Uh, the name escapes me, but from last night from Raw in the Raw Underground, uh, we had a guy that uh, had been on there, which he'd been in NXT previously, but was spending most of his time in Evolve. Uh, uh, and he was a, more of a mixed martial artist kind of guy. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if some of those characters do come in. I know Leon Ruff as well has been used as an enhancement talent to this point. He was involved with the Evolve roster as well. So uh, there's certainly lots of different platforms and avenues it could go down. Um, I want to ask uh, particularly because of the fact we, we mentioned the generator earlier. What were your thoughts when you saw SmackDown last week, when you saw the entire you know, arena kind of destroyed, the commentators chased away, the chainsaw come out with the ropes being cut off. Um, it was a bit mental to say the least. I loved it. Yeah. I really did. Now, uh, could SmackDown be looking at a new look? Uh, are we going to have the ropes again or is it going to be something similar to the Raw Underground? That That is the big question that I, I can't wait to find out this Friday. Uh, but I, I thought that maybe that uh, a new look, trying to get those those ratings back up again. They're trying to do a lot of things. Uh, but for the ending, I thought it was spectacular. Mm. I mean, the last two weeks, or I should say three weeks, I think it's since the, the Fiend himself when he uh, attacked Alexa Bliss, uh, to leave you like wanting to know what's going to happen next week. You know, yeah. that's the type of wrestling that we need for us to be engaged. And, and I think that's something that's lacking right now, especially on Raw. Uh, we didn't get none of that. And then the retribution for what they have done on Friday SmackDown, what they did on Monday Night Raw, there's no logic. There's no, it doesn't make sense. It looked like a bunch of kids just doing, throwing rocks or throwing whatever bricks or whatever, and they're just running away. You know, that, I mean, I thought, I thought they could do more. But as far as SmackDown and what they've done, I'm like, I'm really excited. Yeah, I, I'm waiting for like at least one person just to reveal himself and say, "Hey, this is me. I'm responsible." And what? You yeah, know? but we'll you. see. Hundred percent, I'm with you in all of that. I mean, literally, if you look at Raw last night, I mean, I kind of felt after SmackDown, it's one step forward. I felt we took two steps back last night, if I'm being brutally honest. But like you say, there's there's so much there that can be like taking responsibility. What are you going to do about it? I want to see a faction that comes across as quite fearful, someone that people are frightened to go near. I mean, these guys had chainsaws last week and we had a very politely, a small producer go over to these guys and go, guys, stop, don't throw that through the window. Do you know what I mean? Like, get away. And they're all running around, like you say, like, uh, you know, like school kids that have done something naughty in the schoolyard. You know, it didn't, it didn't feel like it connected so well with me last night. But let's, let's put it this way. Are there different groups in this retribution? That's a good question. I mean, what's to say there's, we've seen five members on each show, but what's to say that it stops at five? There could be five different members on each show. Uh, we could have 10. It could be like a new world order. Maybe we're in for like a takeover. Absolutely. I mean, you said it best, takeover. <laughs> interesting with NXT superstars isn't it um, but um, yeah I mean I wanted to quickly touch as well with uh, the Seth Rollins and Dominic Mysterio stuff as well last night for me that was probably the one of the more intriguing angles uh, to kick off Raw last night and certainly something that's definitely newsworthy I mean Dominic Mysterio probably uh, he looked like sort of the streaky bacon that I usually cook actually on a, on a morning actually when he was finished with those kendo <laughs> sticks poor, the poor lads talk about an initiation to come in you sign your WWE contract you got your first match set for SummerSlam no no rules, and then you get absolutely plastered by Seth uh, Rollins and Murphy with kendo sticks front and back. It was excruciatingly painful to watch as a viewer, but I kind of felt at the same time uh, that this was sort of almost like a throwback to, like we say, maybe, maybe like a ruthless aggression kind of time. Uh, something where you kind of, you can't wait to see 
Dominic Mysterio get his retribution. Well, that's a funny word to use. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's actually, you know, get revenge at SummerSlam, potentially against Seth Rollins. Yes, uh, I totally agree with you. Uh, in, in a sense, if you want to take it back to reality, uh, that was a more of hazing, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, to to have him, uh, Mysterio, to to come in there and play that role. I mean, look at, did you see his body, his the aftermath, of all the marks he had on his chest and back. Yeah. I mean, oh, like that's that is so surreal, and uh, you you can't make that up. I, I, I'm sorry, you you, you just can't. And yeah. more props to to Dominic, but uh, I I just got a feeling that's not going to be enough for Dominic Mysterio to do what he has to do for SummerSlam. He's given all the tools. He's going to have the toolbox, the candlestick, and and who knows what else just to get at him. And I got a feeling uh, that this may be a wake-up call for Samoa Joe to come in and put himself in a situation. I mean, he had the warning signs. Remember at the beginning of the interview where it says that he has to watch what he say or he could get fired in, in, in so many words. And I just got a feeling that we're flirting for a comeback for Samoa Joe. Uh, but for – Dominic Mysterio, to me, I still see him as that baby kid. I don't see him as, you know, that guy that could actually replace Rey Mysterio. I mean, nobody could replace Rey Mysterio. He's, he is the, the future Hall of Famer uh, and, and a legend himself. But uh, I just, I don't know. Uh, could, could we see him transform like John Cena transformed when he went over uh, to Kurt Angle and slapped him in the face, you know? Uh, so I, I, I to, to be honest with you, with Dominic himself, uh, I don't know where where he's at. I know he he is favorite. That got a, a lot of people's attention. That is the number one story right now is Dominic Mysterio. Definitely, I think after last night, I think it took a, a lot of people's attention. Uh, certainly, was a big talking point in the uh, the wrestling community, whether it be you know places like F4W Online or whether it's, you know, other places amongst us in our community, maybe in Twitter as well. It's been heavily discussed by a lot of people given their input. Uh, I agree with you that I think at this particular point, Steph Rollins, I think, has to be the favourite still looking at SummerSlam. He's got the experience, he has everything behind him. Perhaps a game Dominic Mysterio uh, would be a good showing for him. But um, I think that uh, through defeat, he can come out looking even better. So far, politely, Dominic, I mean, he's been pretty much destroyed every time he's been on TV. Uh, Brock Lesnar did the same to him last year. Um, so, you know, he's gone through some experiences, but um, it feels like he's been toughened up. It feels like he's going through the experiences. And uh, I think in time he will benefit from it. And I think he will be a future star. Uh, but like you say, at the moment, we still see kind of, you know, the baby face in there at the moment. And uh, literally when we say baby face, uh, but I, I reckon with time, I think that uh, some good things will come ahead. And I agree with you. I think, there could be some teases there. The last two weeks, Samoa Joe has been teased. I wonder if that uh, medical clearance is coming up soon because they really sort of made you want to see a Samoa Joe Seth Rollins fight. Yes, I, I'm looking forward. I'm all in with it with that match. Uh, name it, it, make that a main event. That maybe that could be payback. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Yep. It could certainly be in there, definitely. Um, but um, I have to quickly touch about Raw Underground with you as well. Um, I just wondered your thoughts on, on the layout, uh, trying to do something different. Um, is it something that's connected with you currently, or is it something that's lacking a bit of purpose? It's still early to determine. Uh, we saw two Raw Undergrounds. We saw the initial, which was probably the last 10 minutes, two weeks ago. And now we saw a little bit of a wider stance. I think that... Uh, and, and look, I'm just making a prediction here, and I'm making an assumption that we could probably see two hours of regular Raw and then the last hour of the Underground. I think that will make perfect sense. And that will give all the other superstars that are not being used a platform to make themselves known. And as you've seen, Shayna Baszler just took control of the uh, the women's division already by just destroying three superstars off the bat. You know, so... Uh, maybe maybe we could also see a mixed gender match, you know, intergender match or something like that, that, hey, it's all in, no holds bar type deal, no rules, just go at it. So, and I, I'm, I'm interested. I really am. I'm really intrigued on this. 
I kind of had a feeling last night, you say that actually about intergender wrestling, I kind of had a feeling that Shayna Baszler was going to just pick a guy out last night and just literally choke him <laughs> out. I had that feeling it was coming, you know. Uh, Shayna seemed to fear nobody in there, and I don't think anyone would have messed with her anyway uh, had that been the case. Um, but like you say, I mean, there seems to be some tweaks and improvements from this week. I mean, the dancers were taken away this week, which I think was the right move to take them away. Um, I do feel as well, like you say, it was condensed into like almost, it felt like the first half an hour, the third hour, uh, minus the, the Oscar Bailey match being in the middle, which was superb, by the way. Um, they had literally almost a, a set of about 10, 15 minutes, which had about three fights in a row. Um, so it felt like maybe they are going to condense it into some form of show and trying to build it and see uh, if this was some sort of improvement. Um, Do you feel that that was, uh, that they were trying to improve this underground last night from the first week? Oh, most definitely. And I think what WWE is doing, and again, this is my assumption that they're reacting to the fans of what they have uh, spread the rumors on, on social media. Uh, but I, I'm just, I think I'm giving it probably till close to SummerSlam to see at what direction, you know, in a couple of weeks to see wh how, how far they're going to go with this. And, and then if they succeed, just be prepared. There might be a championship belt ready to come. and It'll be the underground champion. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they've definitely got some candidates in there. I mean, Dabba Kato certainly would be a strong contender. I mean, you wouldn't mess with him, would you, in, in the underground, let's be fair. Um, but um, I, I have to ask as well, because, I mean, obviously to just play devil's advocate a little bit here, because we give a bit of praise of where they've tried to make the improvements. Uh, one thing that really disappointed me this week was the actual lack of the continuation from last week. Uh, the Hurt Business came in, destroyed everybody. They felt like they were going to take over. Um, and it kind of felt a little bit to me that uh, that was just ignored this week. There was no MVP, there was no Shelton, no Lashley. I felt Lashley could have been someone in that underground that could have dominated everyone and set a real purpose. I mean, was there a need to continue that storyline for you or are you happy that they just moved on from it? They, they should have just went with it, take Shane McMahon out because the Hurt Business was supposed to take over the whole entire thing on the underground. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the impression I was left once the show went off air. Uh, yeah. But then it, you're right. You're absolutely right. Took a step back. Uh, and then you had Apollo Crews, who's just throwing couches. And then he ended up losing to Shelton Benjamin. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. but then again, maybe they don't want to lose that focus because the term faction, mm. you know, back in the days, George Washington uh, didn't want to be associated with a faction because it'll probably cause jealousy or false alarm. Okay, and so if you take that, maybe, just maybe that hurt business may not last that long, and that's probably what they're trying to do. I don't know, but uh, if Shanta Benjamin beating Apollo Crews is not an indicator that maybe he should be next to line for the United States Championship, you have MVP that's trying to chase that title, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's going to be some jealousy going on, and then what is the main mission for MVP? He was supposed to make these people stars. Why is he the one trying to chase for that belt? It's a great question. It's a great, great question. question. And then at the top of that, Bobby Lashley, he's neutral right now, but when once he gets pissed off, he's going to make a quick, hasty decision, and I'm going to feel sorry for Benjamin and MVP. Absolutely. Well, I mean, Lashley came there on the basis that MVP was getting him back in the title picture. Uh, something's happened since Backlash. We've not really heard of anything for a title picture for Lashley since. So um, it seems like he's gone to just being almost the bodyguard of MVP at this point, who's, like you said, quite rightly chasing the success on his own. Maybe this is not such a long-lived uh, business uh, proposition after all for the Hurt Business. Maybe it might be short-lived. Hey, the Hurt Business really stands for, hey, I'm just going to hurt your career. I, Pretty much. You've, you've heard that here first, literally. Um, that's, <laughs> <laughs> I like your take on it. I really do. Um, mm -hmm. Is there any more um, things you'd like to touch on from the current basis? Maybe SummerSlam, NXT, what things you're looking forward to at this particular point? Uh, you know what? Uh, you know, I haven't shared this with my guys yet. And uh, so you'll be the first to hear from me. I have a gut feeling that Sasha Banks and da -da -da -da, Bailey or both lose their titles in SummerSlam. I like it. I like it. Really do. Uh, you know, Asuka, you can't shut her down, okay? And despite Shayna Baszler going on to the underground, that's temporary because her focus is to get even with Asuka. 
they they have that rivalry since the elimination chamber. Uh, that was a big tease for us, even though there were other um, superstars that were involved. But uh, I think that's going to be a brilliant match for the future. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon because I think payback it will be again for those championship belts. Uh, but I got a feeling that whoever wins this Friday on that battle royal is mm-hmm. going to be the person to take that title away from Bailey. And there's nothing that that uh, Bailey or Sasha Banks could do about it. To be honest with you, I think well, they put their, put themselves in a position that they're going to be targeted. They have all the gold. So, of course, a lot of these female superstars are going to be hungry. And, I, I, and that's I, what happens. Mm, I totally agree with you. I have two two things I want to say very quickly. One, mm. I partly hope you're wrong because WWE <laughs> has been so slow recently on updating their website. If you've tried to get a, a fun, one of the – the uh, transparent images. They've only just put Sasha Banks on there with both championships. Um, you know, so in, in some ways, their, their media side needs to quicken up for my liking if they're going to change those belts. But I do actually want to touch on it and agree with you because um, I watched your show, your, your first show since coming back, and uh, I believe that uh, your prediction at the time, correct me if I'm wrong, was Naomi. Uh, potentially it could be that competitor uh, because she's got the, the movement at the moment of deserving better. Um, do you feel that Naomi is the right candidate or would you go uh, and switch that prediction before Friday? As of right now, Naomi, I think she, she's in a, a best spot. But the only thing is, is Lacey Evans is going to be in the way. Of course, yes. You know? <laughs> so that that might be an issue. If Naomi could eliminate Lacey Evans, then she is golden. Yeah. But uh, it, we'll take it back when uh, Paige uh, started the WWE. When she got the call up, her first match was winning the Divas Championship. Do we yeah. see another one, maybe Tegan Knox? Tegan Knox has been the hottest NXT superstar. I she is my second choosing, to be honest with you. I don't think Shotzi Blackheart is there. I think there's gonna be more gim more uh, fuse with her uh, later down the road with Mercedes Martinez, and that's the aftermath of what happens with Real Ripley. Uh, but um I got a good feeling that if it's not Naomi, it could be Tegan Knox or you know, I could be wrong on both of uh, on those two picks. You know, it could be anybody. You know, because it's up for grabs. But uh, to be the number one contender, I'm gonna stick with my gut. I think Naomi. If it's not her, then let's get Tegan Knox because there's nothing left for Tegan Knox to do in NXT right now. I like the predictions. I really do. I think that Naomi is a smart choice, uh, like you said, because of the movement. And uh, I think on SmackDown she would be the top contender, especially with Nikki Cross and. Uh, uh, when you look with Alexa Bliss out of the picture, uh, Mandy and Sonya have got their own stuff going on right now. Um, oh, yes. yes. You know, <laughs> that, should be, uh, that should certainly be an entertaining match if that's put on for SummerSlam as well. Uh, and yeah, like you said, the Naomi and Lacey Evans probably the other two. And uh, you want a face to be in that role. I think that Naomi would be the top choice. Tegan Knox, like you say, uh, she recently had a championship match. She lost that. If she's not going to have a championship run in NXT, then maybe it's time to call her up and maybe she can make a splash on SmackDown. They're certainly lacking, I think, a top face uh, to take on uh, Bailey and Sasha on SmackDown. When Sasha, of course, eventually loses that Raw Women's Championship, they'll both be on SmackDown again. So unless one of them turns in the near future, I think they need a brand new baby face to come in. So I think Tegan Knox would be a good shout. I think Rhea Ripley would be a good shout as well, depending on what happens with her and Mercedes Martinez. Um, so we've, we've got some uh, definitely some candidates there. And I think that's one thing I'm really looking forward to to SmackDown this week. We mentioned Retribution, uh, you know, the Fiend and Alexa Bliss storyline going with Braun Strowman. But I really want to know who who's going to take on Bailey. I think it's uh, definitely the thing I'm looking forward to most for this Friday. Yeah, WWE is supposed to going to make an announcement this week, and knowing then they probably wait till Wednesday uh, night during NXT to say, hey, these are the superstars that are going to be in the Battle Royal. Uh, that way they could continue these ratings, uh, more social media feedbacks and stuff like that. Uh, so we have to wait and see who are all the players now. Are they going to do it traditionally like the Royal Rumble? Or are they going to do it to where everyone's going to start in the middle of the ring? You know? Yeah. That's that's one thing. Uh, but the other thing I, 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 um, I want to say that, that it needs improvement is the, also the tag team division on both sides. Because the fact that Bailey and Sasha are tag team champions – Mm. But when are they going to defend those titles? Are we going to continuously see the Iconics, you know? Or what's the deal with Liv Morgan and Ruby Riot? Are they going to actually, you know, be okay 
trust one another and continue on? Or is there somebody else? Because seeing the same tag teams going at it is it's it's tedious to be honest with you. It's repetitive, isn't it? You want to see a fresh tag team division. You want to see things where it's exciting. I I think at some point they need to bring one or two of the potential teams they've built up in NXT together. I've noticed they've actually broke a few tandems up. I mean, we mentioned Vanessa Bourne. She was with Aaliyah for a long time in the NXT. Uh, That seems to be no more now. I mean, of course, now with the Robert Stone brand as well, along with Mercedes Martinez, maybe that's a partnership somewhere. Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez, that seems to have gone a little bit missing the last couple of weeks so i mean there are there are potential teams that could be there if they don't break them up but um time will tell of it all but uh, it's certainly exciting times ahead uh, in wwe and a lot coming up with SummerSlam. um but um i i have to ask Obi, um, i think that um we get we're getting there we're going to close the show for this afternoon now but um i do want to ask if there's anything that you'd like to uh bring to everyone that's viewing here today maybe something about you know the heart hitting wrestling show maybe something in the products anything else you'd like to touch on before we finish today Hey, I appreciate it, Steve. Thank you. Hey, uh, the HSW Show podcast happens every Tuesday night, 8 o'clock Eastern time, uh, 7 o'clock Pacific. Uh, again, our, our show is about taking the gimmicks, uh, the feuds, the storylines, and create it to reality what's going on. At the same time, you know, we make our predictions. It's it's one – it's a fun show, to be honest with you. Uh, we, we fall under Clovercrest Media – uh, they're the ones that sponsor uh, numerous of podcasts. So if you want, please go ahead and uh, tune in to CloverCrestMedia.com and also follow us at HHWShow.com. We're on every social media platform and audio podcast. And Steve, I want to say it's an honor and a privilege to be on your show. I am your number one fan. Uh, I, I always tune into yours. And again, you can also catch Steve on hhwshow.com for all the stuff that he puts out there on YouTube. It's already displayed on the website. So if you missed it, you don't know where to find him. He's everywhere, to be honest with you. (laughs) (laughs) I appreciate you sharing the content, my man. And uh, it means a lot to have you on here today. Um, Really, it's been great to have you on the show. Um, I recommend everyone to please go and check out the Hard Hitting Wrestling Show, uh, whichever platform you choose to go and do it. Like I say, they've got great content. They have great discussions. Uh, They're very passionate about pro wrestling. Like you say, um, he's got knowledge from the 80s all the way to the present day, so he knows his stuff. Uh, Make sure to check them out now. If you're on YouTube, anything like that, give them a subscribe. Twitter, Facebook, come give them a like, a follow. Keep up to date with what they're doing. They do some great content. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we're all in this together. We're one wrestling community. Uh, Let's grow as one big happy family and and share our products together. Um, And that's what we're here to do today. But, uh, Ovi, thank you so much for being on the show. It means a hell of a lot to have you here today. And uh, thank, thank you. you very much. You're welcome, and thank you. No problem. Well, for those that are checking you on SCW, please spread the word. Share it with a friend, even if it's one friend. Just tell them about SCW. Tell them about the Hard Hitting Wrestling Show while you're at it as well. Maybe we just might get one new viewer and help the channel grow just a little bit. If it's your first time watching, if you liked it, hit the like button. Uh, please subscribe to the channel as well and keep up to date with everything going on. The Q&A will be back later in the week. And hopefully there might be one or two more surprises coming on the channel as well. Uh, but that's all from us anyway here today. Thank you for watching on SCW. Take care and have a great day. All the best.